Then Anthony Albanese today exposed himself as unfit for office. He gave a disastrous press conference today, hours after that Iranian missile attack, and three days after we had anti-Israel protesters in our own streets waving terrorist flags, the yellow flag of Hezbollah. Now, I want to show you some of what Albanese said today, because not only was it a disgrace, it was made worse by the contrast with what opposition leader Peter Dutton said in his own press conference this morning. You compare and contrast and ask yourself, which leader sees what's at stake as an alliance of tyrannies, Iran, Russia, China, now wages a new world war on democracies, Ukraine, Israel, and soon Taiwan. Which of them, these two leaders, can now see that, that this is a battle to save Western civilization that has also come to Australia? Let's start with Albanese's astonishing refusal this morning to back Israel's brilliant counterattack over the past two weeks against the Hezbollah terrorist army that had spent the past year firing 9,000 rockets and missiles into Israel. Does the Australian government support its effort to take out Hezbollah's infrastructure? Well, we regard Hezbollah as a terrorist organisation. Uh, as we regard Hamas as a terrorist organisation, uh, we have been working with like-minded countries and issuing appropriate statements such as the ones that I referred to. Did you notice? Albanese couldn't bring himself to support Israel decapitating the leadership of the world's biggest terrorist army which has attacked Israel, it's murdered US soldiers, it's assassinated Lebanese Christian leaders, it killed even 90 people in Argentina when it bombed the Jewish cultural centre there. But don't worry, you heard him. Albanese has issued, has issued appropriate statements. Oh, what a relief. And he quoted one of them today when he was asked if he at least supported Israel now firing back at Iran after this huge missile attack last night. He couldn't even do that. Israel, of course, has a right to defend itself. Uh, what we have called for consistently is for a de-escalation uh, in the region. Diplomacy, however, cannot succeed amid an escalation of this conflict. You notice how this government always calls for de-escalation just after Israel is attacked? Just when it's preparing to hit back at terrorists? De-escalate! Funny that. And why is Albanese blathering about giving more diplomacy a chance? How does he think diplomacy would have worked with Hezbollah's leader, Hassan Nasrallah, who Israel killed last week? Nasrallah called Israel an aggressive, illegal and illegitimate entity, which he said had no future in our land. How does Albanese think diplomacy would have worked with Iran's top military commander in Lebanon? who once gloated that it was his ultimate dream to destroy Israel. Does this help an easy think? Those guys, Iran's supreme leader, they're all kidding when they say they really do want Israel destroyed. Does he really think Israel can negotiate with such terrorists? Now, Israel, you know, they've worked out. There's in fact no negotiating with people like that. It's either kill or be killed. And to all this, Albanese seems blind, so often criticising Israel instead. In fact, is Albanese admitted today he hadn't even contacted Iran's ambassador to protest at this missile attack on Israel. Have you had any contact with the Iranian ambassador following those strikes overnight? Uh, no. Will I've... you? <laughs> well... I, I've been here in Melbourne, um, so uh, our, our, no, I have not, is the answer. No, he, he couldn't because he's been here in Melbourne and, as you know, Melbourne doesn't have telephones. I mean, no, it hadn't even occurred to him to tear a strip off Iran's ambassador. But like I said, the contrast with Peter Dutton this morning is what made Albanese look even worse. Here... Is Dutton this morning answering the very same question? Did he support Israel's attack on his Hezbollah? And putting it in the right context. Well, Israel's been very clear that they're not going to be subject to attack, and nor should they be. Uh, they're a democracy, they're a society like ours. Uh, they believe in freedom of speech, they believe in adherence to the rule of law, 
adherence to the rule of international law and to see them under attack uh, would be no different than seeing the United States or the United Kingdom or Canada under attack or France or Germany and uh, nothing was happening on the 6th of October just make this point uh, when Hamas decided to go in and slaughter 1200 people uh, in the kibbutzes and at the music festival uh, it was an act of savage brutality these people are terrorists and Israel has an absolute undeniable right to protect and defend herself. One of these two leaders understands that we all in the West are in a war for our values, our democracies. The other guy is our Prime Minister and so unworthy.